Why don't you introduce yourself and where you were, where you, where you, where you, where you, where you, where you <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I know half of them. <laughs> it's, yeah, I do. Do you really want to hear it again? Uh, hi. Uh, thank you so much for asking me to come share what I do with you. I, I love painting in oil, and it's always nice to share my techniques with everybody. Uh, I've been painting probably since I'm a teenager. I'm originally from New York City. And uh, I have a BFA in painting from St. John's University. I interned at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in Manhattan while I was at the university. So I got a lot of behind the scenes knowledge there. And I've done many careers. I've taught art in Manhattan public schools. I've done um, photo retouching in studios in Manhattan. And now I am at the North Hills Art Center down in Ross Township. I'm the executive director, but uh, more importantly, I teach oil and acrylic painting because that's the fun part. <laughs> um, I do a lot of people and animals, organic things. Occasionally, I'll bust out and do a landscape. I try to avoid straight lines at all costs. That's just not what I prefer to do. But I'm not a plein air painter. I admire, I know there's a lot of people here who go out there and, and do these gorgeous scenes and sunrises and sets. And uh, I basically work from photographs. This particular photograph is uh, not one I took. Uh, I found over COVID, uh, it was really easy to pull really cool photographs off of uh, various Facebook pages that uh, cater to artists for references and they encourage you to paint their photographs because the photographers want to see what you do with them. So uh, very often when I'm just practicing, I'll pull something off of one of these Facebook pages. So that's where this particular animal came from. Uh, I have some examples back here. I have some people, and as a matter of fact, they, they really run the gamut. The one on the bottom with the little boy was done such a long time ago that it, this is the same person. <laughs> and I didn't realize it until I popped him up here. I went, oh, I brought the same child twice. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, 28 now. It's my, my youngest. <laughs> but I even, and I, I don't know if we're going to have time when you're leaving, but that, I'm old enough to remember before we had electronic uh, sources to have portfolios and websites and Facebook pages. I actually used to have albums, portfolios that... So I have some of them here if anybody wants to flip through. Some are people, some are animals, uh, but I have enough paintings at this point to bury you. <laughs> so. <laughs> Back to this. Okay. I like to, I have a nice big palette out here, and uh, I don't buy the commercial palettes. I go to the store and buy a roll of freezer wrap, which is plastic coated paper and works just as well as those disposable palettes, certainly, and it gives me as much space as I need to mix. I prefer not to have a lot of colors out on the palette. I like to mix the colors, I think it gives a more unified composition. So uh, I need a lot of space to move. My medium is generally just a terpenoid with some linseed oil in it. I know there's lots of different recipes. Some people put varnish in it as well. I've never found that necessary. And it works for me. Uh, as long as you don't go backwards and put less oil in it, you're, you're good to go. And I try to use the biggest brushes I can. I'm a real big fan of flat brushes. I don't hardly ever use round brushes. I just don't need them. And I just really love painting fur. This one was kind of cool. So I, I also don't buy black. I tend to mix my black and I have, usually I use burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Uh, tonight I have some Van Dyke brown out, which is a little bit cooler and darker. And I usually just kind of come in and start blocking in my darks first. What I like about oil, and tell me if you can't see if I'm blocking. I can, t I can tilt this. Do you want me to tilt it more so you can? I like about the oils for doing fur and people is that it gives you such a long open time. 
In this case, I find it really is beneficial. I can do them in acrylic, but acrylic you have to be a lot more careful with your edges because you really have to kind of blend things as they go before they get dry. And with acrylic, that's a lot harder to do. I'm a real big fan of painting with uh, more than one brush, so by the end of tonight, you'll probably see me with a whole bunch of messy. Could you talk louder when you're facing the other direction? Is the mic not? No. It's just for you. <laughs> talk louder, yes. I like to use, can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> I like to use multiple brushes to get um, colors blocked in so I don't have to pollute the brushes and get them too many different colors in one. And I will just basically work the whole canvas and try to put the colors wherever I, wherever I have that particular color, that's where I'm going to put it. I'm, I'm a pretty fast painter. I, I usually can get mostly done in one shot. I don't usually labor over them for weeks and months at a time unless I get stuck. But I will work multiple paintings at a time because it's easier to um, not screw them up if you just put it down and let it go for a little while and come back when it's dry enough to work. I don't usually, uh, I'm going to get this down a little tighter, um, I don't usually sketch quite as detailed as I have now because I'm doing a demo I did. Normally I just leave it at the outline and then I start blocking it in, but because I didn't want to waste a lot of time tonight I figured I'd get a little bit further than I normally do. Is the sketch in charcoal? I start it in charcoal. And then I come back, and again, this is a Van Dyke brown, very watered down with just terpenoid. And I go over all the charcoal lines that are correct. And then I just take a t-shirt rag, and I wipe all the charcoal off. So I have almost like a coloring book outline. And that's what I use. Uh, the nice thing about oils and acrylic as well is that it's opaque, so it's not like Watercolor, I'm not uh, worried about making a wrong move because if it's wrong, I'll go over it later. It's, it's not, I basically can work until I like it. And with dogs and cats and things like that, getting a likeness is probably the hardest part, getting the expression. And I just love looking into their faces and I like to use photographs that have uh, an expression rather than just a standard, you know, animal staring out at you. Let's see. But I can just stuff all of this stuff in here. I'm really not too concerned if I make a mistake at this stage of the game because I know I can just kind of go back and get it on the next pass. This is kind of a um, limited palette. It doesn't really have a ton of colors in it, which is kind of nice. And I am using a bristle brush, so it's going to break up really nicely when I get to actually doing the fur. And I can get pretty fine lines just with a bristle brush. I try to paint in the direction that the fur is going. That helps a lot too. Nostrils, if you're ever painting dogs, are a little bit tricky because you really can't see them in the nose if it's black on black. So very often all you're allowed to do is show the highlights. Yeah. Yeah, generally in oil and acrylic, dark to light is preferred, but of course in landscapes that doesn't work because you have to get the sky in first. So uh, there are, there's always exceptions to the rule, which is uh, kind of the nature of art, I guess. Uh, 
think I'm going to come in. This is kind of a burnt sienna, I'm thinking. Let's see. I'm using a brand of paint um, called Lucas. It's made in Germany. And for the most part, I really like it. It's uh, very creamy because it has some beeswax in it. Uh, there are a couple colors I don't like because it's patterned after Van Gogh's palette from 1869. So the burnt umber is really light. The um, sap green is really light. But by and large, uh, I like the brand. It's not expensive, and I just get it online. Let's see. Yeah, well, was that called Lucas? Lucas, L-U-K-A-S. It's all, uh, I buy it off of Jerry's Artorama. I don't know how many uh, sites sell it, but it, it's, it's not a bad brand. I kind of went through a gambling phase at one point, didn't like them. So I, I kind of try different things all the time. Let's see. I like the reddish coloring in here. And I like it up in here, too. I like when I have backgrounds that pick up the colors of the subject. Do you sometimes stray from the source photos? Oh, gosh, yeah. I don't think I'm going to do those electric blue eyeballs. <laughs> I'm not thinking that's going to work well. But uh, you can have a really nice or cool photograph and it makes a terrible painting. So I think as an artist, you kind of have to pick and choose what's going to look good and what is uh, going to work for you as a painting. Because sometimes they don't translate well. Uh, one of the biggest problems with dog pictures is they come because they're inquisitive and people take the picture and they look up like this and you get that giant nose with foreshortening, and it looks adorable in the photograph, but in the painting it looked hor horrible. So you have to just kind of be a little bit discerning when you're deciding what's going to work for you. Okay, I'm going to get a little in here. And I'm not going to really blend anything together until I've kind of laid my colors in, and I'm going with these darker warm tones right now, and then I'm going to come back and lighten them up a little bit. I do a lot of mixing on the canvas rather than on the palette, because I find on the palette it doesn't always give you a true, true color, because it's not next to the colors it's going to be with on the canvas. And I don't usually get to a little brush until at the very end. If you can't see, tell me to move. Because <laughs> I can't tell who I'm in the way for. Just say, hey, shift. And right now, I have a fairly thin layer of paint. So because it's thin, it really is easy to control at this point. If I was laying it on really, really thickly, it would be a lot harder to kind of blend it out and to adjust. And you can ask me questions while I'm painting. It takes my mind off it. What's something that you see students or people that you're teaching doing that drives you crazy? Like crazy? Uh, changing something that looks good. Uh, <laughs> no, second guessing themselves. Uh, I, I find that's a really common um, problem because of, you know, they're nervous about whether it looks right or not, so they'll just keep working it and working it. Um, it's, I don't know, it's all, like I said, everything can be adjusted and fixed, but I hate to see something that looks really good and I come back and say, what'd you do? I have no idea what kind of dog this is. Got big feet. 
but I paint a lot of dogs. But as you can see, it blends up really easily just as I get up to these areas. And I will be adjusting them. Just kind of dirtied up that white a little bit. Get some of that in there. Just trying to get a tone on everything at this point and something to blend into. this point I need another whoop, too much the danger of that is it starts um, not getting totally clean and then you wind up with three brushes that are all the same color, for me anyway. So if I can just kind of keep them sort of separate, I think I'm better off. I don't want the charcoal there when I start to paint. That's right. So after the charcoal lines are in, I go over it with a wash, with a thin brush, and I outline all the good lines. And then it dries in a couple minutes because it's really thin. And then I just take a t-shirt rag and I wipe off the charcoal. So you do the, a wash of, with oil? Just, the, just terpenoid. Oh, just? Terpenoid. Because okay. terpenoid's a drying agent, okay. so that dries really, really fast. Okay. And then I can just get rid of the charcoal. A lot of people do that and forget to get rid of the charcoal. You really don't get dinged unless um, you're using light colors. But I really just don't want that charcoal in there. Right, that's why I was wondering. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you definitely don't. I mean, some people, yeah, some people just paint directly on the canvas. Some people like to use a pencil. Um, I, I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. It's whatever, it's whatever works for you. But um, I learned that way, and I, it works for me because it's really easy to erase charcoal. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I find that's a really good method for just laying out your basic shapes. But I can keep coming back in here until I want. Now up in here with all that ticking, whatever you want to call it, I tend to rub a lot of the paint on real thin and just get a base coat. Because then I can come back in with this other brush and kind of just poke at it and get some of these little hairs. And I'm trying to paint in the direction that the hairs are growing. And it takes very little paint. And very often they come out a little sharp to start with. But I can come back with that other brush and work in between them and soften them up and change the shape and break them up if they're a little bit too sharp or too solid. I can kind of come in. And it takes a few passes before it actually looks believable. It doesn't happen in one. People get frustrated. They say, oh, it doesn't look like fur yet. Yeah, because you're not done yet. But it, it's a process. And it's nice to flick and get these kind of little feathery edges. And if it goes too far, I still have my other brush and I can flick it back the other way and get it to go back. So it, it's really a, just a question of how far you want to go and how many times you want to go over it until it comes right for you. 
gonna get a little bluer in here. And as I start picking up some of this blackish color, it's toning itself down basically, which is fine. Get these eyebrows in here. He's looking fine to me sideways, but you're going to have to tell me if he's cockeyed because I can't really see him. <laughs> black over there. And I know Vicky wants me to get those eyeballs in, right, Vicky? I love the eyeballs. <laughs> I could do blue. I don't know if I want that shocking blue. That's a little, that's a little bit unbelievable to me. I don't know. Uh, it, it, look, it, it just reeks of Photoshop, yeah. <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> I know there's blue-eyed dogs. I have one that has marble eyes, that has like blue and brown eyes, but they're never that, that blue. Yes. Not that blue. I have an Australian Shepherd, yeah, and she has she has blue eyes, but they're not quite that electric. So I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm not buying it. Yeah. I don't know. And white, I have to be careful with because white takes forever to dry, as we all know. So Which white are you using? I'm using titanium white and this again is that Lucas brand and it's a very bright titanium white. Uh, if I, I've compared it to other brands and it, it's a little more vibrant, which is which is kind of what I like. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do you put uh, a little dab of oil in on top of them and blend it, and then you just dip right in there? You find there's enough oil in the paint too. The more oil you put in, the longer it takes to dry. That's true. And I'm very ADHD, so <laughs> that's like so why if. Why do they sell the oil? If, if, uh, so it gives it the shine. And it gives it that luminous oil quality. If you do, if I just used terpenoid and painted this whole thing without oil, when it dried, it'd be that dull color. You wouldn't have that that nice shiny oil finish. And you put terpenoid and oil together. mixed together. Mm -hmm. Except, what's your proportions? About a third oil, two thirds terpenoid. You can go up to 50/50 if you're glazing. But if you go beyond that, you risk it being sticky, kind of like if your vegetable oil drips down your uh, bottle when you're cooking and it never quite dries. It's the same effect. So, I mean, you can go less. You can't, you should never go more oil on a layer because it makes it harder to, you, sh you shouldn't go less, I'm sorry, less oil on a top layer. You can always do the same amount or up to 50-50. But, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's not an exact science. It's, it's really dependent, too, on how shiny you want your, your paint to be. Uh, let's see here. But sometimes I'll use drying agents. I like, um, like the Galkid gels and stuff like that that um, makes them dry quicker. So if anything, I'm going the opposite way. I'm trying to get them to dry up, not to, to stay wet longer. Because they're, they're, they're pretty, they're, they're staying wet plenty long. I don't really need more. Let's see. Uh, I don't usually buy liquid. I, I like the gel, the, like the Galkid gel. It looks like uh, Vaseline. Uh, 
Yeah, I just haven't come across it. Uh, I'll try different mediums occasionally. Let's see. They're always coming out with something new. It's hard to keep up. And it does take a lot of going back and forth with the different brushes to try and get everything blended into each other. Because this is staying wet for me, I can come back and I can soften shadows. I can add a tone to it. Let's see, this is going to be way darker. And because I have the big brushes going, I really don't have to worry about coverage. It just kind of covers real fast. I'm just trying to knock everything back so the face is more prominent and that background is not poking out. It's nice to get the rounded belly. Oh, we going? everything back here. Very often if I just get like a background and I just block it in like this and just leave it rough, it's nice to just take, if you have a mop brush, like mopping your floor, it's kind of round. I don't have one tonight, but I just have a real soft one. You can just take any old brush and just literally rub it and get that beautiful soft background like they have in the professional photographs and it, it'll just kind of recede and then you don't have to worry about it coming forward and interfering with your subject. But that's a nice way to do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through a lot of brushes, I don't care. I'm gonna get more of that blue-gray in the background going because I wanna knock this back. But I can get a lot of um, detail, even with these big brushes. If they're clean and they're still pretty sharp, just running them down the edge gives you a lot of control. They, you run into problems when they get dirty and they dry with paint down in the metal part, and then you can't get it out and they become background brushes. I have a lot of background brushes. A lot. And I hate to throw them out. I, I don't know what it is. I always feel guilty if I throw out a brush, even though I know I'm never going to use it again. I must have a hundred brushes. <laughs> Just, they're background brushes. I'm going to use them. I know I will. And I don't. But, <clears throat> let's see, down in here. I just want to get this so it's not white. And it's actually pretty dark over here. Do you have any preferences for kinds of canvas that you use? Um, oddly enough, I do. <laughs> I usually stretch my own. 
uh, and I like a rougher canvas, which is unusual because most portrait painters like the smoother ones. And I'll just get a six yard roll of rough uh, canvas weaves and I'll, I'll do like a dress pattern. I'll buy a whole bunch of stretcher frames of different sizes and then I'll just lay them out with a few inches between on the whole roll laid out so I don't have waste. And uh, I'll, I'll do like a canvas making session. I'll wind up with, I guess, anywhere between about 12 and 15 varying sizes. So it, it, it works out <clears throat> cheaper than just actually buying them. And then I have canvases for a long time. When I have blank canvases laying around my house, that makes me want to paint. And again, I could put this wood grain in if I want, but not tonight. No, it's just going to fall forward. Pardon me? Uh, yes, I. I will do an underpainting sometimes, uh, not usually for like a, a dog por portrait, because I, I don't usually find it's necessary. I do it a lot for landscapes. We're starting to get somewhere here. It looks okay to me sideways, but I'm always afraid when I step back, <laughs> it's going to be, ah! It looks, it looks good from up there? Yep. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. I'm going to get that highlight on there. Well, I think I need to get the eyeballs. What do you think? Yeah. It's looking kind of creepy. <laughs> creepy dog. Okay, I'll go to a smaller brush. Let's, let's see. I could do them. You really think that a dog's eyes are that color? They are. They are. Okay. Yeah. Get more white. I, uh, my dogs are not that white. If you say so. I can leave this out. This is the brand paint. It's Lucas. I can leave it out. <gasps> All right. I have the blue. Sadly, I have this blue. Ouch. <laughs> what you made me do. <laughs> I am blaming all of this on you guys. <laughs> you know what? I remember when those tinted contacts first came out. And I was in high school, and I'll never forget this girl. Her name was Lydia, and she had beautiful, dark, dark hair and blue eyes like this. And I thought those were the most fantastic eyes I had ever seen in my life. Then I found out they were contacts, <laughs> and they were tinted blue. And when she took them out, her eyes weren't blue. But, oh well. Now you can have any color eyeball you want. I have no idea. Uh, you think it works? I'm not even like done yet. Go 
I am not gonna, well, you would, most of my demos wind up getting gessoed because otherwise I would have so many canvases laying around. No, I do not. And you know what? I have not gotten burned yet. Did you sand it? Nope. Huh. Good for you. I have not had a problem yet. I know you're not supposed to do that. And um, I tell people not to do it. I know. But I. I've been taking classes with him for years, years and years ago. And uh, I remember that was one of your things. You don't do that. Well, you're not supposed to. And uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I do it because I don't care because I'm going to paint over them again anyway. But can you make an action after the demo in that class and maybe somebody will buy it? I don't know. Because other way, you know, somebody will be happy with you. I don't know. I I never really uh, feel that they're worthy. I don't know. I don't know. I thought it wasn't supposed to stick real well. Yeah, that it was supposed to crack and, and like fall off. But I, I've been doing it just because I keep reusing them, waiting for them. To, and I'll have like some really thick canvases. <laughs> and uh, I've yet to f have that happen. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, at one point, I had racks that took up an entire spare bedroom. I'm trying to downsize. I'm not doing a very good job of it. Like, how do you downsize? Um, just so over ones I don't care about that I don't like. Um, I, I've. Change over time where you're like, I used to love this one, but now I just can't stand it. Yeah, that's the danger, I guess. But let me see. I have so many that I don't even like. Sometimes I go through them and I say, oh, I remember that. Right. I'm going to do something that's not in the photograph, but just to. I think that makes it look more alive when you put it. I mean, sometimes the lighting in the photograph just isn't great for that, but. I think it needed it. I don't know. Anyway, let's get some little. Toes are cute too, they're fun to do. I didn't make them long enough. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, let's see. I have, to t I have to block it for one second because I can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna, I have to get a little perspective here. Let me get in front of it. Because I know I'm off. To who? Uh, the photographer. Photographer, yeah. yeah. The owner of the photography. Are you going to send the, the picture? I don't know. No, nah, I, I may post it on that Facebook page. That's what you're supposed to do is post it oh. when you paint it. So I'll do that. And usually you, you mention, you tag the photographer so they get to see it. But this is going to come down. But at this point now, I'm just basically refining. I'm knocking back areas that are too bright, like in here. 
gonna get that shadow in here. Get a nice dark one under here again. So I'm just looking to make it nice and solid. Get that ear so defined. That I like the best. I'm liking the nose. <laughs> I'm thinking it's kind of looking like a nose, so that's because noses are hard. I don't know. It that that's kind of the trick. I, I that's what I tell other people is it's really easy to get one part of a photo of a painting that you really like like Linda just said, the trick is to get the whole thing that way. So it's like, you go, yeah. <laughs> it looks good all the way around. Let's get that lighter. But now I would start going around and just really just kind of feathering things and putting in these little transitional spots and dragging things out and trying to make it look softer. And it does take different brushes to kind of come back and, and hit areas. And it's just layering. And eventually, because it's lighter up in here, eventually, hopefully, it'll look like fur and it'll still look like that dog. And uh, we'll call it a day. black in here. You have any more questions for me? Am I, am I doing okay? We're not going to like get locked in. <laughs> Does that look like a dog? That looks like yeah. a dog. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much. And then now when this gets dry, I'd come in, like I kind of knocked this back and made it more beige. I'd come back with a purer white and get some highlights in here and on the paw. But that's just kind of my base coat and just kind of fluff them up a little. Fur, you're still not trying to get too detailed. You know, you're not in there strokes of fur. I, I usually don't get smaller yeah. than these. Yeah. I did this one for the eyes, but normally that's about the only time I use a round brush. And I find that keeps it softer. If you can use a bigger brush for most of it, you run into problems when you start noodling. When you start, okay, I've got to get the hairs. And you start doing that, they come out too sharp. And then they look painted on, they don't look like fur. So if you can just kind of get it in one, these work great too. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you get those trim brushes, they come by the inch. This is a one inch, but they have two inch. And you use them once and they're not square anymore. They get really ratty. Let me just show you what this does. But if I wanted to get like fur, like say, say this was a fuzzy dog. And it does it an inch by an inch. If you were doing it with this, it wouldn't look that natural and you'd be there all day. So I go for this every time. And they're really, you know, they're a dollar. So if they fall apart, who cares? They do shed a little, I won't lie, but I, I still, that to me is like worth its weight in gold when you're doing something with fuzz. It's a nice effect. But, and then you don't like it, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like this paint. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I think, unless you have any other questions for me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.